in 10 years, what I would love this place to be would be a little thriving compound with always people here doing research, people learning about Nicaragua, children coming from the town to learn about the nature, students coming from American University doing learning about the environment, and little particular research projects with monkeys, with frogs, with um, plants. We'd have identified the plants. We'd have trails, but we keep them very nice so they don't get eroded. And yet, at the same time, no garbage, maybe model garden, and just a really happy, thriving kind of place for people in Nicaragua and for foreigners. It really helped me knowing the history of the land because because of what we learned about the history, it's still so prevalent like with, with all the people. And um, I mean, it, there was a war here less than 30 years ago. And I mean, it still has a huge impact on all the people. And knowing that and being able to um, use that and then it really helps connect with the people. Yeah, so for the most part, most of my previous thoughts have been on just like focusing on research in general and um, just overall stuff. But after being here, there's a different type of research I've learned, more hands-on, not just like behind a computer. And I think that that's really important to get out and talk to people and know how they're feeling because what you read isn't exactly what's going on. <laughs> Like, we went to the new school, and it really just, like, it makes you realize how privileged you are to be, to live where we live, and it gives such an emphasis on education, and we've learned that, like, this new government, the Sandista government, gives a lot of emphasis on education, but still, like, in practice, it's not as good as what we, what we're able to learn, and a lot of kids in America view education as a chore when in fact there are people here that would love to go to school but can't afford the boat rides or can't afford to not work for a day and I think that it definitely gives me a new outlook. Like, I feel like they're getting really comfortable uh, in, their, in their shoes and their boots, um, getting comfortable in the, in the environment and a little less shy. They're coming out and talking to people and, and I think enjoying the, the new experiences that they're having. I see Makenge like a big school that everybody has to be proud around here to have a place like this that would be something for uh, humanity, you know, saving the rainforest. Basically thought more about the community and how we can help serve the community um, aside from just like making a reserve. Um, because I think the community very much has or is entitled to a stake within the reserve and, and what's going on here just as much as AU wants, wants a stake in it as well. I think um, excluding them from that would be a bit of an injustice. So I think um, involving them in every way possible is something that we've really been trying to do. So education and, and just interacting with them is, is one of the biggest goals that we have on, on the list of things to do. An unanticipated result was that the couple that owns this reserve, uh, Rico and, and Becky, have benefited far more than they ever anticipated. I, I mean, I know they were looking for a collaborative relationship, but through the students, their curiosity, interviewing the local people, Becky and Rito have a much more clear idea about the possibilities that could occur here. And they still, I, I get the sense that they still look to our students for some feedback about how to how to have a well-defined direction.